of applause for our volunteers this morning. <clears throat> it's not easy always when we do get tired. You know, people get tired. We all get tired. If you're not getting tired, then you're probably younger than me. So, because I get tired way more easily than I used to. I'll come home and sit down just for a second. So, that happens sometimes. Um, hopefully not while driving, but we do get tired. But we keep pushing forward. Volunteers are like that. They keep pushing forward. Even when it is tough, they're there. And they are helping us to grow the church. And I would ask you this morning, help grow the church. Whether you currently volunteer, you don't. If you'd like to volunteer, we'd love to have you. But in all that you do, grow the church. We're going to look at what Paul talked about this morning in uh, his work for the church this morning. But you know, many churches are dying and it is because no one is working to grow the church. Just a couple of things I would share with you this morning, even pastors, and I know many folks uh, put the pastor in high esteem, and although it's appreciated, we walk where you walk. Should we be above reproach? Yes. Should we try to live in an upright way that we can lead you and teach you and share with you? Yes. But do we struggle with temptation? Yes. Do we have struggles in our home lives? Yes. So I, this next um, statistic, I, I don't want you to go, well, I had no idea. So I just told you there, right? So here's the idea. 1,500 pastors are leaving the pastorate every month. 1,500 a month. At a time when Regular attendance is deemed as one Sunday a month. If you come one Sunday a month, then Varna says you are a regular, involved church goer and attender. I share with you this morning that I believe it's more than that. And I want Cross Point Church to be the exception. Amen? When other folks are struggling or going, man, I don't know what's going on, I want us to be. Just growing and growing and growing until we have problems. We have to figure out what to do because God is blessing us because it's all about him and not about us. So remember that. Ask yourself this week, what are you doing to grow the church? If you have your Bibles in Colossians this morning, and I'm going to move through this passage rather quickly. And not to demean what the Word says this morning, but because we don't want to be here so long that children's workers begin to uh, call up here and there are more numbers on the screen than we can figure out and we have a mass exodus because we have some great news to share in just a bit and we don't want them to be down there going, somebody please come get these children. So anyway, pay attention Follow along, unbelievable truth from God's Word today. Verse 24, chapter 1, the book of Colossians. Paul says, I am glad when I suffer for you in my body, for I am participating in the sufferings of Christ that continue for his body, the church. He's writing from jail. God has given me the responsibility of serving his church by proclaiming his entire message to you. This message was kept secret for centuries and generations past, but now it has been revealed to God's people. <clears throat> for God wanted them to know that the riches and glory of Christ are for you Gentiles too. And this is the secret. Christ lives in you. This gives you assurance of sharing in his what? Glory. We could just stop right there. You get to share in Christ's glory. Man, I want some of that. I want to be in that. It says, so we tell others about Christ, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all the wisdom God has given us. We want to present them to God perfect 
in their relationship to Christ. That's why I work and struggle so hard depending on Christ's mighty power that lives in me. This morning, if we had to look at his life, we would say suffering was a part of his life. Amen? When he would write these letters, when he would go about his journeys, he was suffering probably more than he wasn't. And so this morning when he says, I am glad when I suffer for you in my body, for I am participating in the sufferings of Christ that continue for his body, the church. He's saying it's all for him, and I'm glad to do it for you. Since God has given me the responsibility of serving his church by proclaiming his entire message to you. So the first of these four things I want to share with you this morning is about going from suffering to serving. From suffering to serving. You see, in our lives, it's easy, and especially in this me society, to look inwardly rather than outwardly at the needs of other people when we are so caught up in our own needs and our own struggles. Amen? Because we would say, poor me. Poor me. And if someone's going through a struggle, many times, if we were honest, we would say, I know what you're going through. Not only have I gone through that, but here's what else I've been through. And you just want to say, are you trying to encourage me or top me here? I don't know. But you know, the best thing for us when we are suffering or going through something tough or having a hard time is to go serve someone else and meet the needs of someone else less fortunate. Amen. It takes our eyes off of ourselves and puts the focus on others. And that's what he's saying here. He's saying, hey, church, this is, this is where I am. And he gave me this responsibility of serving his church by proclaiming his entire message to you. He gave me this responsibility. We all have responsibilities because we have been gifted by God. And it's our responsibility to utilize those gifts by serving others. So I would encourage you this morning, if you are suffering, begin serving. It will change your entire attitude, I promise. Next, he says, this message was kept secret for centuries and generations past, but now it has been revealed to God's people for God wanted them to know that the riches and glory of Christ are for you Gentiles too. He's basically saying, hey, because this was kept secret, because there was a time that it wasn't proclaimed, there was a time of silence, and now it's here, I'm going to share it with you. That is your job too. So instead of just seeking, once you find him, then begin sharing. You see, it's not the end when we come to know Christ. And for many of us, we think that's it. Woohoo! I came to know Christ. I'm so excited about my new relationship. I feel so much better about things. Life is going to be better. I have new hope. And we stop. But it's also about sharing and sharing in his glory. You see, when we are sharing the gospel, and that's part of sharing in his glory. Because we're going out and we're doing that for him so that we're more like him. And when we're more like him, then it's more likely that we're going to be sharing in his glory because we are children of God through Christ Jesus. Because he said, and this is the secret, Christ lives in you. So if he lives in you, I would ask you this morning, do you ever share about him? Now that you may no longer be seeking, are you sharing? And do you have that assurance of sharing in his glory? Verse 28 
So we tell others about Christ, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all the wisdom God has given us. We want to present them to God perfect in their relationship to Christ or mature in their relationship to Christ. So we tell others about Christ. He's saying we, that's I, and that's you, so that's what? We. Okay, so that's what? We. So who's supposed to tell others about Christ? We are. And if you truly get that, then understand that if our days are numbered, and one day we will no longer be on the earth, and if we are supposed to share Christ with others, then at some point when that time runs out and the question may be asked, did you share about me? What would your answer be if it were today? Can you imagine if every Christian led one person to Christ? Just the one. Can you imagine if every person in this room shared Christ with someone and they accepted Christ this week and they came to church with you this next Sunday? Will that change the room any? We're called to do that. We're called to walk alongside them, presenting them perfect. We're called to walk alongside of them saying, hey, this is what a mature Christian looks like. My life is what a mature Christian looks like. And maybe you're saying, well, hey, I got a ways to go. Don't we all? Don't we all? But we still make the effort. We still say, this is who I am because of what Christ has done in my life. And in spite of who I used to be. And many times we want to not share our story because it might involve some mud. We might not share our story because we might have some junk that we don't want anybody sifting through. And guess what? Everybody has mud. Everybody has junk. You heard Chris talking this morning. If, you're, if you have ever, how many people in here have ever sinned? Raise your hand. Okay, those that did not raise your hand, you just sinned. Sorry. <laughs> Liar! Okay. So if we're all sinners and on this spectrum of sin, it's all sin, then why not share your story and help someone along in their journey saying, hey, not only did I used to be there, I maybe was even worse, but look what Jesus did for me. And so we're to walk alongside people and we're to teach and warn people so that they can understand who Jesus really is. And finally, he says, that's why I work and struggle so hard, depending on Christ's mighty power that works within me. He says, that's why I work and struggle so hard. If I said, who in here has struggled this week? Raise your hand. All right. Who in here has struggled this morning? Raise your hand, no matter what it was. Exactly. But struggling and working for Christ is worth it all. Because you see, when we're trying to do God's work in our power, not going to happen. When we try to program things and say, hey, God, this is what we're doing in our church. How about showing up? Not going to work. He said, that's why I work and struggle so hard depending on Christ's mighty power that works within me. You see, it's Christ's mighty power. And when we depend on that, it makes our life so much easier. Does it make the struggles go away? No. Does it make the tension go away that you feel when you're around those certain folks? No. 
It doesn't change the outward circumstances, but it, change the, it changes the inward person. Amen? We stop driving and we hand the wheel over to him and say, you know what? I'm along for the ride. I trust you completely. Trust you completely. You see, it's doing his work in his power. And I think when we understand that, I think when we get that, then we're able to come in here and say, you know what, God? I don't know where you want me to volunteer. I don't know where you want me to uh, be in a small group, who that's with, but I just know I need to do that for you, and I need to let you work through my life so that I can walk alongside someone and say, hey, yeah, yeah, I volunteer. Yeah, I'm in a small group. Yes, I reach out to people. Yes, I, I do something as simple as saying, hey, do you have a church you go to anywhere? Let me tell you about my church. Let me tell you about what God did for me and changed me. It's full of broken people like me. So this morning, I don't know where you are with that. Uh, the band's going to come and they're just going to play for a few minutes. But I want to just encourage you to see if you are truly desiring to move from suffering to serving. Because if I said, is there anyone here suffering this morning? There would be many hands all over this place saying, I've suffered from this. I suffer because of that, because of this decision. But you know what? I want to change. So I want to go from suffering to serving. I want to go from seeking to sharing. I want to go from doing my own thing to helping present others perfect or mature when they reach heaven. And I'm so tired of doing His work and my power. I'll be honest with you, it gets that way sometimes that we get tired, and so we try to do His work in our power. You know what happens? Stress, burnout, a mess, a moral failure, and then 1,500 preachers are leaving every month. Saying, you know what, I'm not going back into that. It's too stressful, it's too hard. Because we get to a place that we're doing it on our power, not his power and you may be there doing life the same way this morning if that's you you just make your way I just want to pray very quickly and we're not going to spend a long time unless people are deciding to move if you have something this morning I want to encourage you just move and make your way Father we just ask God this morning that you would just move us from where we are to where you desire us to be in working in this church. God, in furthering the kingdom outside these walls. Lord, in sharing with folks in a restaurant, at a grocery store, asking a simple question, living a godly life, letting them see that Christ truly does live in us. And Father, if there's one here that does not know you, then God, I pray that today would be the day of salvation. Lord, you move as only you can. If there's one that doesn't know you, Father, just let them make their way right now and come to you in Jesus' name. Amen.